It's August 22nd here in Seoul, and I'm Kim Dami. We begin with these stories making the headlines at this hour. Starting with Federal Reserve's latest signal of a September rate cut. The vast majority of Fed members believe a rate cut is probable in the following month should the recent progress on inflation continue. And this morning, the Bank of Korea is widely expected to freeze its key interest rate at 3.5 percent for the 13th straight time. Democratic vice presidential candidate and Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, as well as former President Bill Clinton, are set to speak on night three of the U.S. Democratic National Convention on Wednesday. Former President Donald Trump held his first outdoor rally since an assassination attempt on him behind a bulletproof glass. President Yoon suk on Wednesday visited the Army's ground operations for the first time since its establishment back in 2019 to encourage South Korean and U.S. troops there. He warned North Korea would face the end of the regime if it invades the South. The minutes of the Federal Open Market Committee revealed on Wednesday that a vast majority of members believe it will be appropriate to lower the benchmark interest rate in September. Now, if economic indicators proceed as expected, Lee Seung-jae starts us off. From March 2022 to July 2023, the U.S. Federal Reserve raised its key interest rate a total of 11 times. Since then, the benchmark lending rate has remained in the 5.25 to 5.5 percent range. However, that could change next month with the Federal Open Market Committee set to make its next rate decision. According to minutes of the FOMC from July 30th to 31st, released on Wednesday, the vast majority of members believe it would be appropriate to lower the benchmark interest rate in September if economic indicators proceed as expected. Watchers are anticipating a 50 basis point cut in line with the Chicago Mercantile Exchange Group Fed Watch, which indicated a 39 percent chance that the U.S. Central Bank would lower the benchmark interest rate by 50 basis points next month. Recent employment figures released by Washington further fuel the prospect of a rate cut next month. According to the U.S. Department of Labor's Bureau of Labor Statistics on Wednesday, the U.S. job market is not as hot as initially thought. Data showed that there were 818,000 fewer jobs in March of this year than initially reported. This means that the U.S. job growth from April 2023 to March 2024 was about 30 percent lower than previously reported, marking the biggest downward revision since 2009. Traditionally, the U.S. Fed cuts rates on poor employment data, with the latest figures putting pressure on policymakers to cut rates. Lee seung Arirang News. In the meantime, the Bank of Korea is set to make its key interest rate decision in the coming hour. And it is expected to keep the rate as it is for the 13th straight time at 3.5%. Let's turn to Professor Yang Yidong for more this morning. Welcome back, Professor Yang. Hello, good morning. To jump right in, a rise in household debt is cited as one of the reasons that the BOK will hold the current interest rate. Now, what is the correlation there? Well, I do agree that the BOK will freeze their base interest rate to 3.5, which is the 13 times consecutive freeze since uh, 25 BP increase in June last year. And there are both the pros and cons about the decision. Well, we can think about the major forces that may help lower interest rate. For example, we have very stable you know, consumer price index increase around 2% for the past four months. And secondly, there is a strong market forecast that the interest rate will be lowered in the very near future. Mm. But the negative aspect about the interest rate cut is we sh there are a lot of concerns about uh, real asset increase. So for example, uh, in uh, July, the uh, house prices in the Seoul area increased about uh, by 0.76%, uh, which is large in the last almost five years. And secondly, the house debt increased about $13 billion in the second quarter. And that trend is on very hyper you know, trend. For example, in July, the house debt for uh, house price increased about $7 billion. And this month, in, in April, single month, 
and have stayed increased almost $4 billion, which is very close over the 50% uh, of last month have stayed. So considering all these factors, I think it really makes it at this point of time mm. will be okay to freeze the uh, base interest rate. Well, I'm sure it's also deeply connected to the heated housing markets here in South Korea. How will that influence the BOK's interest rate call this time? Well, absolutely it's very closely related. I mean, but uh, I should uh, raise some, uh, you know, the concerns about the recent increase about the house, uh, the prices. I mean, it is true that house price increased for uh, the past three or four months. Mm -hmm. But this trend is quite different from the uh, hyper panic increase in year 2021 because the first reason for this house price increase is the increase in the house materials. And secondly, there's a strong demand for real residents. And Korean government provided very strong support to help these new married couples or new married couples with new babies to purchase their own houses with a very strong uh, support policies. Right. So my point here is even though we have very strong concerns about the house price increase, if we have lower, uh, you know, the uh, increase uh, interest rate, but the Korean government will maintain very strong uh, the policy against uh, the real uh, state increase, such as DSR, etc. But, you know, at the same time, there are calls for a rate cut amid poor domestic demand here in the country due to the, you know, prolonged trend of high interest rates, which is seen as the main trigger for the country's low economic growth outlook. Uh, Professor Yang, is that so? I mean, are we also in need of an urgent rate cut? What do you think? Okay, uh, we should uh, think about the uh, dual perspectives about the economic growth and GDP. The first one is you know, quite different from the long time ago. I mean, domestic demand has taken uh, upper hands against export. Now, domestic demand takes about uh, 48, 49% in our GDP breakdown, whereas export is now taking up only uh, 39 or 40%. So it's true that the Korean government need to care more about domestic demand. Mm. And what is really concerning is in the first quarter, domestic demand increased by 0.7%, but in the second quarter, domestic demand decreased by 0.2%, even though the early expectation was on increase by 1.0%. So yes, I do agree that uh, to boost up the domestic demand, we need to uh, lower down interest rate. But if you focus on GDP growth, and we have very strong drive, which is export, that take about 40% of our overall economic growth. Export, we have very positive forecast for the export this you know, year. I mean, uh, the Trade Association expected our export will increase over 9% this single year, which is, you know, uh, quite a uh, large scale in, in, in the history of our export. So, considering all these factors, yes, it really makes sense to uh, lower the interest rate because we may maintain a very strong export and we can also boost up domestic demand. But uh, again, let me remind you that the renewed the Korean government need to maintain a very strong policy against real estate uh, and house prices increase. Oh, then I have to ask you, what kind of hints do you think the BOK chief will give this time? I mean, a lot of analysts are saying a rate cut after the U.S. Federal Reserve cuts its own and possibly, you know, most likely in September. Well, I expect that the BOK chief will uh, insinuate very strong uh, hints to low interest rate in the next. We have only two meetings of uh, monetary policy board uh, this year mm -hmm. uh, in uh, October and, and, and November, and maybe in this February, maybe uh, and this Friday, the uh, the uh, Jerome Powell, the chief of uh, FLB, will uh, give restraint hints to lower the interest rate in the United States. There are many many reasons behind this uh, the speech. The first one is. You know, the country price index in the United States stays about 2.9%, uh, which is the first, you know, drive into 2% level in the past three and uh, almost, almost three and a half years. And uh, in the, uh, they exposed about the meeting, uh, uh, the diary of FOMC in January, and they announced that uh, some members strongly argued to lower the interest rate. And also, there's a very strong expectation in the United States, such as CT, JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs, that uh, you know uh, the FOMC will lower the interest by uh, big steps, like uh, 50 BP in uh, September, another B, uh, 50 BP in uh, November, another 25 BP in December. So, rounding uh, 75 BP or 125 BP will be scale of interest rate cut in the United States. If the uh, FMC in the United States lower interest rate, 
I mean, if, uh, be okay, we'll feel very comfortable to look mm. to lower their best interest rate as well. Well, the rate decision in the coming hour also will come also with the BOK's growth outlook for the country's economy. Now, do you think the central bank will keep the growth outlook at 2.5 percent? What do you think this time? I think so. Well, uh, we can also take a look at about the risk report of KDI. The KDI start with a 2.2 growth rate in February. Mm -hmm. They increase it to 2.6 in May. It lowers slightly down to 2.5. And this level stays very same as IMF and ADB about 2.5. But again, there are many reasons for this pretty much prospective uh, forecast. The first one is we have a strong expectation for the uh, export. And our domestic demand will remain pretty solid if we lower the, uh, the interest rate. So export interest, though, the, both two major forces for GDP growth have two different forces. So the only condition for the, uh, you know, the, uh, leverage our the economic growth is instead of the uh, export market such as the uh, uh, the Middle East crisis and also uh, you know demand level in China etc so unless there are very uh, dramatic turbulation turbulence from the uh, export the, the external market our the economic growth remain very solemn level around 2.5. All righty Professor Yang thank you as always for sharing your insight with us you have a wonderful day. Thank you too. Have a good day. It's day three of the Democratic National Convention, and on Wednesday, U.S. Vice Presidential Candidate Tim Waltz will give his acceptance a speech, while a former President Bill Clinton and Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi will also speak in support. Our Shin ha -young tells us more. The U.S. Democratic National Convention entered its third day on Wednesday in Chicago, a day after Kamala Harris was endorsed as the next presidential candidate in a ceremonial roll call. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, the vice presidential candidate, will deliver his acceptance speech, introducing himself to American voters, as well as outlining his political vision. This comes two weeks after Harris picked Walz as her running mate, calling him the vice president America deserves. A campaign official said he has quickly gained momentum nationwide. Walz has a military background with the U.S. Army National Guard and experience as a high school teacher and football coach. Also on Wednesday, the convention is expected to emphasize a fight for our freedoms theme with speeches from former President Bill Clinton and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Republican candidate and former President Donald Trump held his first outdoor rally on Wednesday since his attempted assassination last month. He addressed supporters in North Carolina standing behind bulletproof glass. Trump emphasized that once he takes office, he will restore America to maximum strength and return the world to peace, adding that he can achieve this with just a telephone call. Meanwhile, ABC News has reported that independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is considering dropping out of the presidential race this week and is expected to endorse Trump. Shin ha -young, Arirang News. President Yoon Sokker on Wednesday encouraged South Korean and U.S. troops as they engaged in their annual summertime exercises. The Urgy Freedom Shield aimed at deterring North Korean military threats. According to Yoon's office, the president visited the Army's Ground Operations Command in Yongin, Gyeonggi-do province, where he was briefed on their operational status, including the Urgy Freedom Shield drills. Now, this is the first time a South Korean leader visited the command since its establishment back in 2019. There, Yoon highlighted that the South Korean and American soldiers are the roots of the joint defense posture and also warned North Korea that Pyongyang would face the end of the regime if it invaded the Seoul. Coronavirus has been going around this summer with the spike in the number of COVID infections. But seeing this as part of the endemic process, the government reassured the public that it can be managed within the current response system. Choi soo reports. The current COVID-19 surge in South Korea is expected to continue until the end of August. In a Wednesday briefing, the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency predicted that this summer's resurgence will peak later this month before decreasing. 
This summer's COVID-19 surge is expected to peak at the end of August and be similar in scale to last year's. The agency added that the reasons for this COVID-19 surge include the fact that last winter's outbreak was not very severe and the COVID-19 vaccination rate has been relatively low. However, the KDCA also stated that the current management system is sufficient to handle the situation. The current situation should be seen as part of the process of COVID-19 becoming endemic, not as a crisis like the pandemic from 2020 to 2022. According to the agency, the number of COVID-19 inpatients from 220 hospitals nationwide dramatically increased from 226 in the third week of July to 1,366 in the second week of this month. However, the agency emphasized that the cumulative fatality rate from January 2020 to August 2023 was 0.1% and is similar to that of seasonal flu. It has ensured a stable supply of treatments and test kits to protect high-risk groups such as the elderly and in case of a potential uptick in cases. The KDCA has announced that treatments for about 180,000 people will be distributed by the 26th. These supplies are planned to last for high-risk groups until October, after which they'll be provided more steadily through the general health care system. Around 3.25 million test kits are expected to be supplied. The Ministry of Health and Welfare recently said that effective vaccines against the current variants will be supplied starting in October, urging people to follow personal hygiene measures. Chi Seok-hyung, Arirang News. South Korea's fuel tax cuts will be extended through October as fears grow over a wider regional conflict over in the Middle East. Our Moon Hedan has this report. The South Korean government is extending fuel tax cuts until the end of October as global oil prices surge with mounting tensions in the Middle East. That's according to Finance Minister Choi Sang-mok during an economic meeting on Wednesday. Volatile global oil prices due to the recent escalating tensions in the Middle East to place a burden on people's livelihoods. As a result, the government will be extending the fuel tax cut for two months until the end of October. Currently, the tax on gasoline is levied at 656 Korean won per litre, with a tax rate cut of 20 percent applied. For diesel, it's 407 won per litre, down by 30 percent. Back in July 2022, the government expanded the fuel tax cut rate to 37 percent for gasoline and diesel in an attempt to stabilize consumer prices before reducing the rate in steps. This is the 11th time that the government has extended the fuel tax cuts as they were due to expire at the end of this month. Global oil prices have been prone to fluctuations in recent days with uncertainties in how the conflict between Israel and Iran will play out. On Wednesday, oil prices slipped as mediators from Egypt and Qatar, as well as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, pushed for a ceasefire agreement. However, the market is volatile, with oil prices rising for five straight sessions due to positive U.S. economic data a week before. Stabilizing domestic consumer prices is a key reason behind the extension of the fuel tax reduction measures. Last month, oil prices at home rose 8.4 percent year-on-year as the government lowered the fuel tax cut rate. This is the highest increase seen since October 2022. Initially, the government expected revenue from traffic, energy and environment taxes to reach 15.3 trillion won this year, or around 11.5 billion U.S. dollars, which is up by more than 40 percent than last year. Due to the extension of the oil tax reduction measures, tax revenue could be lower than expected. Arirang News. Gyoto International High School, which consists of a large number of Korean Japanese students, has advanced to the Japanese High School Baseball Championship Finals for the first time ever. Now commonly known as the Summer Goshen, the school rallied back to defeat Aomori Yamada High School 3-2 in the semifinals on Wednesday. Gyoto International High School has won all five games played in this year's tournament en route to the final. Now, some 30 percent of the school's student population is of a Korean descent. It will face off against Ganto Daiichi High School on Friday for the championship.
Good morning, I'm Kim Xiong and this is The World Now. We begin today with updates on the luxury yacht that sank off the Italian coast of Sicily on Monday with four bodies retrieved from the wreckage by rescue divers on Wednesday. The Italian Coast Guard has not yet formally identified the bodies, but rescuers have been searching for, for four British and two American nationals, including Mike Lynch and his daughter, alongside chairman of Morgan Stanley Bank International, Jonathan Bloomer, and his wife. The Bayesian, a 56-metre luxury yacht owned by Lynch's wife, was carrying 10 crew and 12 passengers when it sank, with only 15 survivors from a total of 22 on board. Those on board were reportedly guests of Mike Lynch, founder of the software company Autonomy, who had gathered to celebrate his acquittal in a U.S. fraud case. The Bayesian was anchored 700 metres off the port of Porticello when it was hit by a suspected ferocious pre-dawn tornado over the water, also known as a water sprout, and sank. The body of the vessel's cook was recovered on Monday. Now, social media influencer Andrew Tate was held overnight by Romanian police on Wednesday over a new set of allegations including trafficking and sex with a minor, money laundering and attempting to influence witnesses. Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan were taken in for questioning by Romania's serious crime agency DCOT and remanded in custody for 24 hours as investigators searched their properties for evidence. Tate, who has a massive following on social media, was already awaiting trial for charges of rape and human trafficking, both of which the brothers have denied. According to DCOT's statement, four houses were searched on Wednesday morning in Romania's capital, Bucharest, and in Ilfov County. The Tate brothers are former kickboxers of dual UK-US citizenship who are accused of exploiting women involved in their adult content business. The Tates were first detained in Romania in December 2022 and released from house arrest in August 2023. Moving over to India, at least 17 people have been killed and 41 injured in a blast at a pharmaceuticals manufacturing plant in Andhra Pradesh state in the south of the country. The explosion occurred at the pharma company Essentia Advanced Sciences Manufacturing Unit, which spans over 40 acres in the Achitapuram Special Economic Zone. District officials said they suspect an electricity-related fire. The local police superintendent said that while rescue operations are underway, the death toll is likely to go up. Local media reported that bodies of several workers were feared to be trapped under the rubble while the force of the explosion launched severed bodies, body parts of some workers across the factory grounds. Essentia manufactures intermediate chemicals and active pharmaceutical ingredients. The state government has ordered an inquiry into the incident. Finally, to Spain, where world's oldest person, American-born Spaniard Maria Brañas, died on Tuesday, age 117. Born in San Francisco on March 4, 1907, before her family returned to Spain, Brañas attributed her long life to avoiding toxic people. She was named the oldest known person in the world by the gerontology research group after the death of French nun Lucille Randon last year. Brañas lived through the 1936-39 Spanish Civil War and two pandemics, the 1918 Spanish flu and the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. The gerontology research group said that Japan's Tomiko Ituka, who is 116 years old, is the next oldest person alive, becoming the candidate for the Guinness World Records World's oldest person title. Branya's family said that she is in her sleep, at peace and without pain. Good morning. The long-awaited so-called Chaosa magic is not going to happen this year. Statistically, the weather turns towards autumn on Chaosa, the second autumn season term, but Korea remains in the grip of a severe heat wave this year. And those in the east will notice a big jump in heights this afternoon, topping out at 36 degrees in Gangneung. Meanwhile, blazing sunshine to start out the day, but skies will turn dark, dropping showers after lunch. 
expect to see 5 to 60 millimeters of showers, heavier rain in the northern parts of Korea, with the mercury dropping to the low 30s, but feels like temperatures will be a couple of degrees higher. Seoul and Chuncheon get up to 31 degrees, Daegu, Jeju topping out at 34 degrees Celsius. It feels like we are in the middle of summer, but I'm sure many of you can tell autumn is well underway, with sunsets getting earlier each day. It's going to take another week or so for it to feel like autumn with the heat to stay day and night. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. We thank you for watching New Day at Arirang. Arirang News will be back at noon Korea time.